We are not going to give into the delusion. This is not going to help all of the major mental breakdowns that are going on in our world that one, men can be women or two, men should dress up like women and put on fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like this is insane. No wonder we have problems. Hey slurs, it's your fave British cigarette all here with another episode of AFR. Uh, F slur reacts. Today we're getting back to our Christian roots and we're watching two homophobic losers sharing one brain cell try to sell us their Patreon courses on how to best let Jesus into your marriage bed. Which like, would. If you want to suggest something to react to or have a watch party with me for the next video I film for this series, you can join my Patreon. Before we drag this filth for filth, don't forget to hit subscribe and like this video so I know you want to see more. So grab a scrunchie and some drugstore makeup and let's watch the channel that has critics saying, comments turned off. We are not gonna give into the delusion. This is not gonna help all of the major mental breakdowns that are going on in our world and suicide. Like this is not helping it by affirming that one, men can be women or two, men should dress up like women and put on fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like this is insane. No wonder we have problems. We're not gonna give in to the silliness with men dressing up as squirrels and dancing and twerking on stuff. This is insane! No wonder we have problems. Girl, why are you acting like a toddler? You're 36 years old. What's up everybody? It is Kristen and Bethany here. Sisters. Oh my God, wow, they're sisters? Hey sisters. Okay, I, I bet if you separated them and gave me five minutes in a room with each of them alone, I could turn them on each other. Mm -hmm. So Bertram, your sister told me you've always been incredibly supportive of her. That's right, yeah. We're really close, inseparable. We're like that pair of demonic, self-wandering pants from the movie. That's really impressive, especially since she even said that you never even get jealous of her being the fan favorite. As a Christian myself, that's really amazing to hear. Well, I, I don't... She's, she said she was the fan favorite? Oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, sorry, did I did I overstep? Is that not true? It was just something she said in passing. What did my sister say exactly? Well, she said that there's a reason why the band isn't called Bethany and the Pussycats. That's really interesting. That's, that's, <laughs> that's really interesting. Where's that little s sister now? We need to talk about this. This is something we've been wanting to talk about for a while drag queens and yeah. the fact that it has become so mainstream it is so popular mm -hmm. it is something that we're told children should be exposed to it will give them sexual diversity opportunity you know their young minds are so moldable and we want to shape them in the right way no that doesn't really happen no we say it doesn't matter because they're just people in costumes you're the freak saying it's molding them into something in fact something happened recently in our own backyard not literally what? Why would she hit herself in the face with a stack of blank paper and then act surprised when she felt it? But in Texas, <laughs> I whacked myself in the face. Okay. Girl said, okay, headband, we're filming right now. Pull yourself together because I can't carry this podcast by myself anymore. We're from San Antonio, so not too far away, Dallas, Texas. Um, this was in the news a lot, so you probably heard about it, but there was a big drag show and it was literally titled Drag the Kids to Pride, a family-friendly drag show. That's how it was advertised. And basically they were saying, this is the ultimate family-friendly drag show. Come bring your family, bring your little kids. We're gonna have drag performers in a nightclub, by yeah. the way. Why does it matter if it's a nightclub if it's during the day? Does the menacing aura of sundown lurk? Does sin hide in the shadows? Um, you know, it, there's going to be dancing and they even said, in fact, we're going to have five spots open for kids to join the stage to dance with the drag performers and it's going to be this wonderful family friendly night, you know, let's go. And in fact, when I saw some articles and some videos about this event, yeah. there was a huge neon sign in the background that literally said, it's not going to lick itself. We don't need to give you any more, you know, details. information about that details. You can probably guess what that means in a nightclub like this. Okay, let's all be real. You two don't know what it means. I bet if they found out about rimming, they ripped their skin off. Also, no shade girl, but if you're watching this, tart color corrector and shape tape, trust me, 
events. And so here we have this event yeah. and it's mm -hmm. being applauded by so many in society saying this is awesome. You know, these pictures of these kids that parents would think this is a healthy, yes. mentally, you know, healthy thing to bring their kids to. And so we just want to talk about it because truly, as we look at God's design for the man and the woman, drag queens and the celebration yeah. of this sort of entertainment. Girl on the left is just saying, yeah, and coughing and hurting herself. Like, get her out of the room. Celebration yeah. of this sort of entertainment <clears throat> is such a mockery on God's design for womanhood. Oh, yeah. and, and to say like, oh, but we need to be supporting this. Like, no, we are not going to give into the delusion. This is not going to help all of the major mental breakdowns that are going on in our world and suicide. Like, this is not helping it by affirming that, oh, yes, you know, like, you know, one, men can be women, or two, men should dress up like women and, you know, put on fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like, this is insane. No wonder we have problems. But here at Girl Define, we are striving to, you know, share a biblical worldview, get back to God's design because he is a good creator. And one of the ways we do that is over on Patreon. So we have an incredible- No, 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 no. This boar worm did not just plug her Patreon before I had the chance to talk about mine. Not on my channel, Stinky. Our way of saying thank you is by giving you free resources like five strategies to find freedom from sexual sin. This one you can actually get completely for free girldefined.com slash freedom. Oh, yeah. um, other guides that we offer, battling sexual temptation, uh, 50 questions to deepen your friendships, five strategies for thriving as a single girl, um, a Christian girl's breakup survival guide, the list goes on. There's but so many, it's hard to hold them up. Get a graphic designer, these look horrible. We have so many courses for you godly girls to choose from, that's right. For example, Girls Guide to Being Godly Girls. Our newest, Guide to God's Girlhood and Godliness. And my personal favorite, and I think my sister's favorite too, because she reads this one nicely, she does, is God-fearing girlhood and is analingus a sin. The list goes on. So go to patreon.com slash neglected click. Hey. So someone said, following up on that drag event that happened in Dallas, Texas, someone literally said, because of course there was, there was pushback. Thankfully, hallelujah, there are still yeah. people out there who are pushing back and saying, I don't think this is healthy for kids. I don't think this is a really good family event. Maybe try the zoo. Maybe try a museum. <laughs> like, hmm. Oh, so taking the kids to see a bunch of monkeys jerk off and eat shit is fine, but this isn't? And so someone came out and said... Anyone who thinks drag isn't for children is wrong. Drag is expression. And children are such judgment-free beings. They don't really care what you're wearing, just what you're performing. Mm. Oh, really? Yes, they are in many ways judgment-free beings. It's because they don't have judgment. They're children. Like, yeah. in so many ways, they're being, their mind is being formed. Their worldview is being formed. What they think about sexuality, what yes. they think about everything is being formed. It's like... Plato, like soft Plato being molded and formed. And that yeah. is the job of parents to help guide and strengthen and grow their children in a healthy yeah. way so they can grow up to be mentally stable adults. And you're taking young children so impressionable. They don't really have a grasp on what's happening in the world. And you're exposing them to such sexually explicit perversion. These people are like, you took them to see drag, the most sexual thing in the world. And then the drag act is just this. Or this. Or this. <laughs> Girls, if you're getting off to that, then the Holy Spirit left you a long time ago. You have like the library readings, Drag Queen Story Hour, and yeah. just this massive over-sexualization of these adults, which is so creepy to me. Adult, typically men, already dressed up like women, now preying on these young children, you know? Literally, like, parents are just handing them over. And I, I don't even want to know, you know, like, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, the stories that are going to come out. And I think there's going to be a massive change because right now, us as adults are the ones putting our children right. in this situation, putting them They can't in even hands consent, of, you know? Yeah, they're like, just told, this is good, this is healthy, go for it. They don't really have a grasp on what's happening in the world and you're exposing them to such sexually explicit perversion. Like, how yeah. is that going to help them in the long run? So I think it is a form of child abuse. This is child abuse? <laughs> Let me just scroll back through your videos and see how many little vlogs you've made about the Catholic Church. Every single argument they're making is so ironic. 
Here, let's play this clip again, but I'll switch up the visuals. Hey, you, girly. Hey, girl who cooks while watching. Turn around for a second. Let's do this one again. Come on. Of these adults, which is so creepy to me. Adult, typically men, preying on these young children, you know, literally, like, parents are just handing them over, and I... I don't even want to know, you know, like 15 years from now, 20 years from now, the stories that are going to come out. And I think there's going to be a massive change because right now us as adults are the ones putting our children right. in this situation, putting them They can't in even the hands consent, of, you know? Yeah. They're like, just told, this is good. This is healthy. Go for it. Like this is explicit perversion. Like... How yeah. is that going to help them in the long run? So I think it is a form of child abuse. Even taking young boys and dressing them up like over-sexualized yeah. women, um, you know, grown men and women who think that's like mm -hmm. hot or whatever, that is just- Ew, nobody's saying it's hot. We're saying a boy wanting to wear leggings or a pink shirt doesn't fucking matter. And then it's unhinged and weird that you think it does. Get a job, stay away from her horrific to yeah. think that we are doing this to our children. And so it's so important to get back to the basic fact that we have a designer. Kmart is not a designer, Christia. We have a God who loves us. We have a God who cares about us. And he did not uh, make a mistake when he chose to create the male and the female from the beginning of time. He was extremely intentional. But he made a mistake when he gave you brown hair. Yeah, that was God's little oopsie. You're calling God a Butterfingers? You're saying God J. Christ doesn't have an artist's eye? And creating man mm -hmm. and woman and putting them within the context of marriage, putting sex and intimacy within the context of marriage, not for just general consumption. Oh, general consumption, sir. I didn't know you'd be around these parts today. Here, let me put some tea on and throw a it in the fire so you can get yourself for a toasty. Ah, he chose to create the male and the female from the beginning of time. He was extremely intentional in creating man mm -hmm. and woman and putting them within the context of marriage, putting sex and intimacy within the context of marriage, not for just general consumption. <laughs> I was about to be like, um, that's not how evolution works. And then realized, of course it isn't. These two skull rattlers think the universe is 6,000 years old. But then I thought, God also didn't create male and female at the beginning. He made Adam and then made a bunch of animals for Adam to breed like a twink. And then when Adam didn't want to, God got snippy, snatched that queen's rib out and grew some freaky inverted Adam out of it. Matter. Putting sex and intimacy within the context of marriage, not for just general consumption, but as a beautiful celebration yeah. of that covenant and a beautiful, um, ultimately a reflection of God's desire to deeply know us and us to deeply know him in an intimate, um, close mm. relationship. Sorry, how does you getting railed allow God to know you in a more intimate way? Sorry, intimate way. Intimate. Is God in the corner doing a cuckoldry? Is that what you think, Kelly? That God is a cuck? That Jesus is sitting in the corner like, yeah, say my name in vain. Jesus Christ, he's saying this dad. And he's like, oh yeah, son, I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing you see it too. Um, and so it, it's heartbreaking to think that we have strayed so far from God's design. And we think, wow, well, true happiness is rejecting everything that our creator, our designer, whether we acknowledge him or not, has set forth um, and we're going to bend all of these gender norms. We're going to completely reject male and female and we're going to mash it up, mix it up, chop it up, literally inject. Bop it, twist it, inject it, invert it, castrate it, zip it, twerk it. I just think it takes common sense to look at and go, wow, this is a disaster. No wonder we are having so many mental problems and like anxiety problems. Mm -hmm. Like we are literally setting ourselves up on a trajectory of disaster and acting like it's the solution. Yeah. So as, as Christians specifically, like obviously ah! we're coming from a worldview. We're Stop fucking screaming while I'm talking and go brush your hair. Jesus fucking Christ, Kelly. That we discover who we are by knowing who God mm. is. We don't discover ourselves apart yeah. from God. We learn who we are because we're informed yeah. by God. And as we look in God's word, we see, like you said, he has a very clear plan for the male and the female. This is such a fucking mess. 
we as Christians have to be so intentional to follow our creator. (laughs) You know, we're told in society, society tells us to look within Mm -hmm. to discover who you are. Look at your feelings. Uh, Look at what you're into. Look at your past. Look at your present. Like, look within to define yourself. But when we look in God's word, we really see that Mm -hmm. we discover who we are by knowing who God is. We don't discover ourselves apart from God. We learn who we are because we're informed by God. And as we look in God's word and we see, like, he said he has a very clear plan for the males and the females god making like you said distinctions he made a man a male and he made a female a woman and it's so clear but in society we're told you know men can be women women can be men anyone can be anything Mm -hmm. really and it does get so confusing it does get so complicated complicated and if your framework is that you have to look within and you have to find and discover who you are and now you have like a thousand options for who you can be That is so hard. That is so scary. And it's, and even if you think you find who you are over time, it could change one year, two years, five years, it could be different. So your actual issue is that change is scary and you don't want to have to think, you don't want to have to spend any time examining who you are. You want to be led like a shepherd leads his flock, like a sheep. But when we look at God's word, it, it honestly erases the confusion. Like there's so much confusion. There's so much dysfunction. And we look at God's word and we see the simplistic truth. truth that in the beginning, he created them male and female. He created them in his image. So you agree. Men that look like women are made in God's image. So not only have you called God a cuck, you've called him a drag queen. And so the fact that I'm born with the female body informs me of God's intention for me. It informs me of who I am. You know, Psalm 139 talks about all of us when we're in the womb. The, the Bible says that God sees us. We're fearfully yeah. and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well because God was forming us, handcrafting us. None of us are a mistake. Oh, so God doesn't make mistakes? Then why is your hair highlighted? Why do you cover up the skin God ripped from the sun of the garden with potions and tonics? I checked to see if there was a way to wear makeup in a way that honors God. And there's another video where they discuss this that apparently only exists on the account Girl Deleted, which is very funny and clearly not run by them. And since we're all just hanging out, just girls, Let's watch that one too. We at Girl Deleted believe it's important to expose the videos that Girl Defined wanted to hide from the public. We do not condone what Girl Defined preaches in any way, shape, or form. Hey guys, it's Kristen and Bethany here with Girl Defined Ministries. And in today's vlog, we're gonna be sharing with you something (laughs) fun and practical how to wear makeup in a God honoring way. I'm sure you look back on some of your pictures when you're younger and think, oh, wow, goodness. what was I doing? But I remember as I got a little bit older, we both went through this phase that we call the raccoon phase <laughs> where we thought that more eyeliner was better. Like we thought as much as we could possibly get on our eyes. Like, what is this? Why are you doing this? Why not just around your eyes? Why are you doing it? Why are you holding like a child holds a crayon? And we were at this conference and I remember this, we were talking to these, this like, don't these girls them. and this really, their dad came over and he was like being super sweet and he's just kind of, kind of commented. Do you remember this? And he's oh, like, Hey girls, yeah. like y'all are such beautiful young women, but just like kind of a, a thought, like maybe if you wore less eyeliner, it would it maybe enhance your natural features even more. And we were kind of like, what is this random dad? Like really giving us makeup advice? We do everything. Oh, you know, makeup. like when you're young, you think you know it all. And so, wow, he sounds like a creep. This is a super weird story. Okay, so for me, when it comes to most things in life, I want like black <laughs> and white answers. I'm very black and white yeah. and I want to know what's right, what's wrong. Just tell me what to do and I'll follow it. What's right? What's wrong? Just tell me what to do and I'll follow it. What the fuck? That's so true about you, but like you do know that's bad, right? If the Bible told this freak that holding hands was a sin, she would be on this channel calling people whores for locking digits. Not a single original thought, just a yawning void yearning for direction. Like the Christian worm brain version of I'm just a whore, sir. What's right? What's wrong? Just tell me what to do and I'll follow it. And when it comes to makeup, I kind of wanted the same thing. Like wear this, wear, you know, you can wear lipstick, but no highlighter. Okay, (laughs) great. I could do that. Just give me the guide and I will follow it. But when it comes to the Bible, there are certain things that the Bible is very clear about. Like, okay, having sex before marriage, that is a black and white answer. The Bible is very clear that 
sex should be safe through the marriage bed alone between one man and one woman. Like, there's no questions. And for me, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I can follow that. It doesn't have in the back with the maps, like a guide for makeup like, <laughs> tutorial. Yeah, like it doesn't have that in the back. Come I on. wish that would be nice. Like the perfect totally makeup yeah. <laughs> or nothing, but it doesn't do that. I'm sorry. This is so down to earth and casual, y'all. We're just having way too much fun with y'all. I'm sorry. This is so down to earth and casual. This is not casual. You two look like there's a man with a gold chain and no shirt just off camera with the kind of gun that accommodates a silencer. What the hell are you talking about? If by casual you mean unscripted nonsense, then I guess, yeah. But we're hoping to share with you uh, uh, one of the main verses that we've read on the topic of makeup. A lot, uh, you know, the verse you've probably heard before. Kind of discuss it, what it, what we believe it needs, and then hopefully gain some wisdom from that verse. So there isn't one specific verse that talks directly about makeup, but there are a lot of verses that talk about our design as women and then our design as Christians and yeah. how we can best honor God in our lives. So the verse that we've really looked at and that we're going to look at today really quickly comes from 1 Timothy 2 nine through 10. And this is something I'm sure you've all heard, but just listen up because the context is really interesting. It says, likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire. Hold on. What's that in your hair, mama? A braid? What's that on your neck, girly? Gold? Wait, Rewind. Didn't they say they want specific instructions that they can follow? Black and white rules? Well, there's two. Neither of you two hypocritical little shits are following them. Why is that? And so you might think, okay, wait, is this first saying we can't wear like pearls or costly attire? Like, what does this mean? But when you dig into the context of this verse and you get at the heart behind what is trying to be communicated in this passage, God's women, Christian women should dress and act and look a way that re represents holiness. We can take that context and say, okay, for today. Oh, right. Just in a way that ignores the Bible and favors your personal preferences and reframes them as uniquely holy. Gotcha of what we're trying to say in this. But the one thing that we do see in scripture is that God created women to be beautiful. When Eve came onto the scene, it's like, wow, everything <laughs> is good now. The curves, just everything. Did God call Eve curvy? Is that real? Let me know in the comments how Eve was described because I don't know about that one. About us and you see like even the world gets this in the culture. Who are they putting on the fronts of the magazines? <laughs> it's these beautiful women to showcase their- I like how when society sexualizes women, that's proof of God's plan. But when society sexualizes gays, it's proof of them rejecting God. I want to put both of them in a corn maze with a toddler and see who makes it out first. We were created God to made be us beautiful creatures. Yes, we are. That beauty is a good and wonderful thing. And I am like as girly girl as they come. Like to the core, I am like sparkles and pink. And that's just the way, personally, Kristen's not as much that way. <laughs> yeah, Kristen's totally the alt goth sister and you're the super girly one. I can really see it now. But we both love to enjoy the beauty that God, that God mm -hmm. gave to us. And with makeup, we kind of view it as like, well, we do live in a fallen world and Along with that, we get some really dark circles. We get some acne, some Ooh. pimples. Oh, okay. So God made you like essentially perfect and beautiful. But when you got kicked out of the garden, he gave you dark circles. These girls are creating canon left and right. Again, we kind of view makeup for us in that same sort of way. So if we have dark circles, we might cover them. And honestly, we both just enjoy makeup, enjoy enhancing, enhancing the beauty that God has given us. So that's kind of our view on it. And if I enjoy enhancing my face in the exact same way, that's a problem because the Bible didn't think fat could be beautiful. Your lucky gays can't drive because I would you both my mother car, Mary. And that's what we love. Just don't, you know, don't feel like your beauty is a bad thing or like, oh, I can't, I can't enjoy the mm -hmm. beauty the way that God designed me. Like, oh, I need to hide yeah. it or and this that, is a bad thing. Yes. You know, I don't think you should worry about that little duckling. It's super, super fun. And so because we have so much fun in this area, we thought it would be really fun to show off some of our favorite products. Now we are not makeup professionals or makeup pros. No. Beauty. We have been wanting to do this for a really long time. We know a lot of you have asked for makeup tutorials and maybe we'll get to that someday. We, but want now, we thought it'd be fun just to show you some of the products and we have a yeah. lot of really different products. So for me, yeah, I can tell. Greed, gluttony. I get really dark circles, like really dark circles. For like now, your whole life. <laughs> we're both very fair skinned anyways. And so when we don't have makeup on, like our faces kind of disappear. So <laughs> what you use. <laughs> Use is going to vary based on your skin tone, yes. your color, like how, how dark or light your features are. So because I get such dark circles, I use this stuff. It's going to be hard to see, but it's by MAC. It's Select Cover Up Concealer. This stuff is strong. No, it is not. And just so you know, we are not getting paid. This is not an advertisement of... <laughs> MAC would not sponsor you. We know that, girl. 
favorite products is actually a newer product I started using this year and I love it. My sister Susanna introduced it to me, but it's- Oh God, there's more of them? The sister they keep in the attic must be a real fucking prize. Clinique Foundation. And so it's Clinique Beyond Perfection Foundation Plus Concealer, two in Ooh. one. And I use the color um, 0.5 Breeze because my skin is very, very white. <laughs> oh, this one, give, I'm sorry. This one gives me the ick so bad. Ugh. And once you're all done with your makeup, I just kind of put this on. I actually use this instead of blush. I know you do I blush. blush too. I swear, Jordan B. Peterson would call these women painted whores. Just saying. Super successful for my lips. Guys, we hope this video was fun and inspiring for you. And wherever you land when it comes to makeup, whether you believe it's God honoring for you or not, just remember in scripture, we don't really see a black and white stance on yeah. this. So we each just need to pray individually and make a choice that we believe is gonna best honor God mm -hmm. with our appearance in a way that reflects holiness and purity. None of this seems particularly God honoring. It's all about their personal need to look attractive to society. And I get it. I care more about looking cunty than going to hell too. And that's it. I guess the moral of the story is Jesus is a cuck and so are you, but you're also gay. Please give this video a like, comment, and share after you subscribe. Join my Patreon for these videos, add and sponsor free, extra videos, early access to all the videos I actually get done early, and Benny's, like my Patreon exclusive Discord, where we do watch parties for videos like this that I react to, and getting your name in the credits. I also have a second channel, Respect the Dead. It's a video podcast where we pick a person from history and talk shit about them in a way that will make you realize that bullying is fine if you're only bullying dust. While the credits roll, here's a little preview of an episode. Okay, love you, bye. So there's kind of like two ideas behind this research. The first one is actually kind of rational and cool. And the second one is less so. Well, like the I first... get that like this isn't a, a communication style that is completely different from humans. So studying it could allow us to understand other communication styles completely exactly. different from humans. But these bitches would be like gas. Like <laughs> they would <laughs> like they're not gonna be like Yeah, haven't they seen a like, rival? <laughs> two eyes, two eyes, a nose and a mouth being like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs>